statute is 422 and it's 51.4, question 51.4. Okay. Do, do, do. So, uh, how y'all been holding out, uh, Deshaun, in the spirit, in the spirit and naturally? <coughs> naturally, I'm doing okay. I can't complain. Uh, spiritually, pretty good. Okay. Pretty good, actually. I guess I don't have too much to report. Yeah, we we really be checking on y'all, really, because we don't never get to talk to anybody till the day of. So we just want to make sure y'all are right, and you know, because it, it's it's stuff happening, honestly, in the spirit. Are you um are you all picking up anything like spiritually? Like bad things? Anything. Like since uh you all are believers now and you've been in it for a little while, are you like sensing things like in the spirit realm and sometimes it comes through the people, but you know what I mean? But are you I'm just trying to see like Ooh, what's the word here? Because you told me you all were doing street ministry, so I was just trying to see your level of uh, discernment in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Or you just see just people. Do you just see just people, but not anything far as like... Don, can you kind of help me while I'm trying to say Cause yeah I mean you know what I'm talking about what, but. yeah what Chris is saying it's like when you're going out what do you see that's going on in the spirit realm with people like you know you're dealing with people and you see even if you don't even talk to them you're just picking up what's what's going on so what's, what's, what's what you what you're seeing at, at that point <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that there are some people that have got spirits on them. There's some people who are struggling with, you know, the decision that they make. And sometimes I can identify some of those decisions are even really their own. Um, but I can definitely see some people who are just, you know, not interested in any prayer or getting to know God, but they would rather just have the benefits. You said the benefits... Yeah. Yeah, that we offer, and then just be on their way. Uh, there was one lady that got really upset at one of the girls last night. We were serving chili, mm -hmm. and we were putting, like, a couple crackers in everybody's chili, and the lady got really upset, saying, you should have asked, and you shouldn't assume, and she was going off, and Jesus wouldn't assume he would ask. And she was just in a really bad mood and she walked away with her food. Hmm. I know, and, you know, she was disturbed. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> the guys um, arguing and it seemed like they were about to fight. It, it was you know, a lot of contention. It like, was spreading love and then here y'all are trying to fight each other. So it was a lot of contention then. Uh, I don't know what contention means. Uh, basically, what you just described, fighting and aggression, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was a little strife, but um, besides those two things, everybody seemed to be, seemed to be all right. Okay. It, did, did Quay make it back? Yeah. So, Quay, even though you probably didn't go out, what about on the job? Because I know you just went to the job and home, or maybe the grocery market. Are you noticing anything? We're asking these questions for a reason. I was, I was out last night. 
with the group. What what about what's your version? My version of the story? Yeah. Um I think it went incredibly well. Um everybody like ate up all the food I made for them, all the cookies I made for them and everybody wanted water. I was handing out water and cookies and I was talking to people. And uh this lady came over and she was looking really sad and depressed and she said she needed prayer. And I sat on I sat down on the pavement with her and I was talking to her for a long time. I was like hearing her whole story. Mm-hmm. And she was saying like she was saying something along the lines of like, I've, n- I've never met anyone like you. I can tell that you're a really good person. Mm. And she said, I feel something when I'm around you that I haven't felt around anybody else. I'm like, that's God right there. You and told I was her it was God? Know, yeah, I was telling her like, all like wow. us meeting, it wasn't by chance. This was supposed to happen. And I said, I think God lined up this moment exactly how he wanted it. And she was like, yes, you're right. And I prayed for her, and she was saying that she messed up really bad, and she feels like it's all her fault. And I said, that's the devil whispering in your ear. You need to get him out of your ear. And I was just praying that, you know, the devil stays out of her ear. And she, like, um, receives transformation and just get out of that dark place. It was really powerful. Wow. That never happened ever before to you? That's, like, a first time? I don't think it's the first time, no. Wow. Probably like a third or fourth time. But it was great. It went very well. I have a, a question for you and uh, your brother. Mm-hmm. Since, since you guys, the Lord saved you and you've been on this journey, because when I first met you guys, when your dad and I first married, um, y'all were reclusive, quiet, shy, um, not outgoing, and just, you know, shy, if I can say it that way. But since this journey started, because I can actually, like two years ago, did, would you have said, well, I could see myself going out talking to other people about Christ. But it seems like you guys are coming more and more out of your shell, and the Lord is... Uh, preparing you because before when I first met you, you guys didn't have much conversation. Like you, mm-hmm. you know, you, you keep your words few. You answer questions, but as far as engaging people with conversation, just not just myself, but anybody, you didn't do it. Not at least not in front of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm asking, do you guys see yourself evolving? Where oh, now, you know, like, like you can go out now and talk to other people and feel free to be yourself. And what I do love about the both of you is, you know, I think they trying to ask for some tips on how to pray. And prayer is from the heart, you know. And the more scripture you know, that helps because God said, command his word. So when you pray, you pray the word of God over someone. That's more effective, but God honors prayers as long as it's his will. And he honors prayers as long as it's his word. It don't have to be verbatim what it say in the scriptures, but it has to line up to the word. Mm-hmm. But if you know the word, you're more effective in, in your prayers, the way you pray for someone. But I just, I really appreciate that you guys are growing um, in, um, in, in the knowledge and in the will of God. In, in the freedom of God, that liberty. I love it. You know, I I, I probably could have saw Deshaun sitting down talking to somebody, you know, a little bit more freer than you. Mm-hmm. But it seems like you're really coming out of your shell. And I just give God glory because Deshaun's a little bit more open than you to, you know, talk and, you know, come out of his shell. But you're a little bit more laid back between the two of you. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just love that God is, is, is taking you guys on a journey. It's a journey. I'm telling you, it's a selfless journey. And I think a lot of times when people get saved, if they don't go on to really be discipled and to understand what Christ was really about and what is required of us in our discipleship, then we're not going to be fruitful. We're not going to produce Christ. Christ is not going to be produced in us. 
and then we're not going to produce Christ through others. And your whole journey is to help others get to where you are and better. Okay, okay I'm done. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, um, did you all get a text from me to watch a movie that Angel Studios put out? Oh, I don't think I haven't heard it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called... We were talking about it. Okay, it's Where called... Um, Don, is it After Death? Yes. Yeah, it's titled After Death. Because I wanted you guys to watch it, and we want to discuss it next Saturday, if, if possible. Is it in theaters right now or what? Yeah, I don't know how long it's gonna be, but um, check your your local your local theaters and see if it's there. Not right now, but um, we went and we we already saw it, so we were were we saw well I saw something in the movie where the Lord Jesus spoke to a man and because of all the trouble in the world today he don't see how it's possible to win anybody it's just it's chaos and he said it's God's plan that everybody love and Jesus says it's gonna work he says it's God's plan so when he said that I said I'm gonna do a study on um, on the love the love of God so in the book, let me stop this alarm clock. Yeah, in the book, I put I posted the page to the the text because I don't think both of you have the new book. But if you do have the new book, it's page four twenty two. And if you're not near your book, just pull up the picture I just sent. But let's let's pray. Let's pray. Uh Koishan, we'll we'll deal with your car situation when we're done, okay? Okay. Okay, because um I just we we need the word. We we just gotta keep getting that word. And um, I also was, uh, when I was driving home, it's like, you know, an hour drive. So I was like singing praises to the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, we, we have to praise you uh, as, as groups, you know, together. And I did, I already got like the, um, I got the words in tight formation, but you all, you you were like with me one day when it was uh, when I was singing, but you all didn't know how the mel the melody went, but you saw the words. You know what I mean. So, but I do know we as believers we supposed to sing to the Lord, and it brings His presence into our midst. We don't want it to be dead and dry it's like that's why a lot of uh group studies be dead and dry i mean we i have asked him to come in but it's so much different when when we love him you know and, and it, it can just be one song you know and if everybody can learn it but you all don't have to sing it with your mics on you can just i don't know it's like i kind of Social media is something else from, rather than being in person with y'all. Like if y'all could come to our house, you know what I mean? It's different when we're all in one room and it brings God's presence there. And But like I said, when we ask him to come, we believe he's here and we, we believe in the power of prayer. But it's never a... a, a an occasion where we should be just never inviting him and ignoring him. I just want y'all always to know that because it's not, this is not something that people do. This is not something that humans is just doing, you know, and he's just nowhere, you know? So 
Let us pray. Uh, I'm going to start the prayer off, Don, if you uh, or anybody, even Deshaun Quay, if you if you all just say, I want to add something in there, please do. But I want you all to close your eyes and see yourself, see, see us in the spirit holding hand in hand, though we're in other states, and see see you going up to the throne with with me and Don. See see yourselves ascending up where the Father says, Come boldly before his throne. And he said, Come before his presence with singing. See, that's the scripture he taught us. And that's why I have done that. And if even if it was Hallelujah, Lord, I love you. You know, I was doing something and, and I, it's from my heart and I do love him. But it says also come boldly and come before him with thanksgiving. And and so that's when people when people start off prayers, they say, Father, thank you, Heavenly Father, Yahweh. You have to say his name because everybody will say God, like what God? So Father, Yahweh, Abba. We love you, Father, and we say thank you. We offer the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your holy name. Father, your name is set apart holy. We are your children, and we, we're just so grateful to you, Father, for this beautiful day. Everything is perfection. The sun is doing its job and heating the earth, Lord, although the, the, the leaves are falling Everything is in its course. Lord Jesus, thank you for being a mighty warrior for us. Uh, you said you are the avenger of us, O oh Father. And you have been fighting for us during these um, heightened seasons, Lord, where people are celebrating darkness. You have been fighting along with your hosts, Father. You are the Lord of hosts, Lord Jesus, Yeshua. And we love you, Lord. I pray everyone will will silence their phones and just and and you all you have to tell them something. And Father, we say thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Love you. Thank you for this day. We invite your Holy Spirit in the midst of us. You said, if we be gathered together in your name, you are here in the midst of us. And Father, right now. We gather in the name of your holy child, Lord Jesus, Yeshua, the Nazarene. And you said, if we gather together in your name, you are here and you cannot lie. So welcome, Holy Spirit. Father, welcome in our midst by your spirit. Welcome, Lord Jesus. You said, we will come and make our home abode with you all. So, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are that spirit, and where you are, there is freedom. There is liberty, Father. Let us feel the warmth of your embrace, Lord Father. Father, thank you for your word. It's going to energize us. Thank you that you said it's, it's your plan for everyone to be filled with you who is love, and it's to spread like a wildfire, oh, Father. And this person will love, but some are not loving. They are um, giving up, Lord Father. They are letting things overwhelm them. But Father, it is your plan. So Father, I pray you will anoint me your servant as I read whoever reads, who who that we would that you would do it through us. You would bless us even in prayers right now. Because sometimes when the words got to come out, we don't know exactly how to say it. We know what we want to say, but you know what we want before we even ask. But Father, even now, thank you. Thank you for directing this prayer. Thank you for being a mighty warrior for all of your saints, all of their children's children, and our nephews, nieces, our siblings. For all your elect people all over the planet, Lord, that you're going to shorten these evil days so they will be saved, oh Father. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We, we've been working, Father, through the night, laboring, and you know the tiredness in these bodies, but I pray 
for a touch, Father, by your holy angels, the same angels that came and strengthened the Lord Jesus when he walked, Lord, and you too will strengthen us, Father, to keep pressing on. And we love you. We bless you. Thank you for blessing our going out and coming in. When we leave out and come in, thank you for helping us to resolve the car issue that we have today that was uh, told to us, Father. You're going to get us out of that situation. So, Father, thank you. Everyone who agree with this prayer, amen it. Father, amen. We all agree. Amen. The blood of Jesus is applied to all of you, and peace be to all of you. Thank you, Father. Do you all have the uh, photograph up on your phone or your books open to page 422? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to read 51.3, and whoever wants to read 51.4, uh, you can just start reading, but I'm going to read 51.3. It says, what is the purpose of the Christian lifestyle? What is the purpose of the Christian lifestyle? The purpose of the Christian lifestyle is is number one a to glorify God and that's Yahweh Abba Father Most High by the way we live and the good works that we do just as a body is dead without a spirit so also faith is dead without good deeds this faith that we're in and that's found in James chapter 2 verses 26 quote and unquote you are the salt of the earth and this is the Lord Jesus Yeshua talking we are the salt of the earth but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor you are the light of the world like a city on a hill or mountain glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father and the kjv says that they will give glory you know to our to the father in heaven and that's matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16. b the purpose of the christian life is to be a light to the world to make our witness to the world effective let your light so shine before men or mankind that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven Matthew 5:16 but you shall receive power and that same word power is a, a authority as well you shall receive authority when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, upon you, and you shall be witnesses. That word witnesses, we looked it up. It even means martyrs, meaning we're willing to die for, we're, for what we're studying here. We're not just studying some book and we're going to take off running. We're, we're, we are going to go out believing this. If somebody say, uh, if y'all don't throw that stuff away and come worship this man over here, I'm going to kill all of you. Uh, you know, we're going to have to make a choice. Are you going to go worship that man over there? Or are you going to die believing this? See, witnesses. And you shall be witnesses to me in 
Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and look and to the ends of the earth and that could be right where you are you guys are Ohio Kentucky where we're at see the the ends of the earth it, and, and I know this was written you know 2,000 years ago but you see it's to spread it has gotten to us it started in that place and nothing has stamped it out you know what a mighty God to his word see how he can preserve it and he got it out and they didn't even have social media back then you know isn't that mighty now does anybody feel inspired to read 51 4 if not I'll keep going Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's 51 4 carry on to the next page yeah just just read what you see and I'll pick it up for what's on the next page if okay. 51 4 reads so what are the Christ like qualities that God desires in us they are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The next page says, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, NLT version, but when the Holy Spirit controls your lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in you or us love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control now I want you all to study those really quick Yeah, because the Lord Jesus, when he said, he said to a, a man in that movie, it wasn't a movie, it was a documentary. Everybody in, the, in that movie wasn't play actors following a script. They were the actual people, uh, guys. They were the actual people that had uh, near-death experiences where they came out of their bodies, the natural body. And, and one man, he said, well, I think it was a lady, she said, I, I, I had a body, another body, but it was a spiritual body. And it was, it was just showing that the scriptures is true. It, it's, it, any, any, everything they were saying, you can find it in the Bible. I mean, that movie can be watched several times because it's a lot to take in. But this one man was standing before the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, the Nazarene, and Jesus said, you have any questions for me? He said, I have a mil millions. Did he say millions, Don? I think so. Yeah, he said, I got a mil millions of questions. But he, he just, he, but he, because <laughs> he said, when you're, when you come out of your body, everything is at enhanced advanced your mind is advanced and he said he did not have to talk to him with his mouth moving he he was talking directly into him inside of him and i was locked on that and he he the guy was telling him it's not going to work the world is really messed up it's a messed up place and the lord the lord jesus said it will work it's father's plan it's God's plan and when he came back into his body he told his wife which was strange to her 
that it's, uh, it's, an, it's all about the ocean. It's an ocean of love. It's an ocean of love. And she thought he went crazy and went wacko, you know? And she was like, okay. You know what I mean? She was like, an ocean of love, you know? And then I'm thinking, because he wrote a book about it. I, I really want to read his book, you know? The movie didn't go into details, but when I left the theater, it was like the Lord was ringing at it within me. Love. It's all about love. So, today, one of the fruits of the Spirit, and we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. It'll be false love. It, it'll be fake. You know how a person will just with a simple word, they'll say, love you, man. You know, like, okay, Deshaun, I love you. Quay, love you, man. Love you, son. You see, it's it's a word. Mm -hmm. But guess what? There are some scriptures, we're going to read them. And the Lord, he wants me to... It's just his plan, and it has to be according to scripture the right way. Because some people, it says they have a, a fake love, a fins. They call it fins love. And that's just the way that word was. But if you look it up, it, it, it's, it's not real. It's not the love of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that was number one, love. Now, we're going to go through the other ones, but I want to just focus on love because that's what the Lord told me. Uh, let's see. And if you all want to say something while I'm flipping to this page, feel free to... Did y'all have a question about them scriptures that was read? Or y'all kind of are following along? Are you not? Y'all you, ain't lost or nothing, are you? Like, I'm just totally lost. I don't get nothing you're saying today. Mm -mm, not at all. Nope. Okay. Don, you okay? I'm good. I'm driving, but I'm listening. Okay. Because it, it's, it's, it's weird, you know, I might have to say, when, when we're not in one room, you know, and I'm talking to uh, avatars, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I did want to add, you said that we were going to worship, so I don't know when that's going to come, but I, I thought I'd remind you. Yeah, um, we, we, we... We will, I, I do, it has to be order. There has to be, everything has to be decent and in order. And I did type out the words, but as for the, what do you call it, Don, the rhythm of it? You know, what is that called? Like how to say it out? What's that called? I mean, it depends on, it's, it's how the song flows, I guess. Yeah, how it goes. It's like, I, cause I don't need to hear y'all, Quay and Deshaun. We're not trying to see if you could sing and all that. We just, we just want to love him. Like here, let me just post some 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 of the words because wow, it says my phone got four percent battery and it's plugged in. That's that's strange. But that's not the phone that y'all are on Messenger. It's just I got my phone next to me and it's plugged in and yet it's saying now two percent. So I got an extra one here just in case that one went out. I believe it's them cords too. It's them fast chargers. Sometimes they don't be want to act right. Mm -hmm. Some cords don't charge as fast yeah. or don't charge at all. Yeah, and that's that's crazy. It's like, 
But I think the one that you all are on are okay, but it was just, I was going to use that one for um, the Bible. Let's see. But let me get back to the word, though. See, it's, it's about that word, too, you know? Now, I titled this Continuing to Love, for that is abiding in God. See, we got to continue to love. You know how some people, they can start off loving, and then because the world is getting so bad, they're not loving no more. That's what the Lord showed me. He said, title it Continuing to Love. For that is abiding in God, because he is love, the source, you see? And I was like, oh. So, it says, Jesus, Yeshua, the Holy One, said this is the Heavenly Father's plan. Note, this teaching will reveal God's plan. And are y'all somewhere where you have uh, something to write with? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me turn this speaker on here. Because I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. I just want y'all to write them down. And that phone that I was going to use to post the scriptures, it, it died. And I'm like... Normally I put them in the group thing, but say again, Don. I said we can hardly hear you. You sound like you're away, far away from the phone. What about now? Much better. Okay. Now, I want y'all to write the scriptures. I was going to post them, but that phone, for some reason, the charge ain't going in there. Now, I just shut it off. But if if one of y'all can type really fast as I give them, please do. Okay. This teaching will reveal God's plan. And he wants love to spread like wildfire, you know. And there are scriptures telling us not to let our love grow cold and stuff. So it says, first thing to know, God is love. Think about that. He is love. He's the source. It, he is love. And he or she that continues to dwell in love, meaning in God, continues to dwell in God and God in him see so we got and that's first John chapter 4 verse 16 if one of y'all can put type that because you'll want to probably come back to these and add them to your notes if you want to do a study on love first John chapter 4 verse 16 and it says God is love and he or she that continues to dwell in love continues to dwell in God and God in him or her. See, he, this is what he wants. This is his plan. Okay, somebody type 1 John 4, 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. And it says, Beloved. You know, God's talking to us, calling us beloved. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that continues to love is born of, of God. And knows God. He or she that doesn't continue to love 
doesn't know God for God is love and I was like yes Lord it was like he was giving me a a, a tune up you know I need to hear this fresh you know how if we don't meditate on scriptures for a while we'll, we'll forget it and we're like but when we hear it we're like oh, yes Lord yes thank you but this is his plan and we want to cooperate we want to cooperate with his plan I do I really want to okay second second thing we need to know this this is what we need to know and uh, it's a scripture it says let us not love in word neither in tongue just saying it you know uh Deshaun, i love you man Quayshawn, love you don i love you that's what that's saying it says let us not love in word neither in tongue just saying it but in deeds and in truth and his deeds i put what you do see it's what you do that shows me you love me like y'all can say dad i love you and i'm like okay yeah, i love you too but you you never showed any love to me i mean i'm 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 not saying you haven't but you know what i'm saying say you never did nothing that's what this scripture is saying so can somebody type first john chapter 3 verse 18 and thank y'all for helping me. So the second thing is we need to know is let us not love in word, neither in tongue, just saying it, but in action, deeds, what you do to one another and for one another. And in truth, see, he added truth in there because some people... It, it ain't truth in it you know it's fake hey dad yes sir it's funny that this is the scripture we're talking about and the, the topic we're talking about we're at your ministry I, huh? you talking about at your church at your ministry Can you read it? Read what it said. It says, Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Wow. What a coincidence. The the day, like the, the odds of yeah, what's the odds of that? <laughs> yeah. Man. So, I want somebody to type Hebrews chapter 6 verses 10 now. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 10. And it reads, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Now I looked that word minister up and it means to be an attendant to that person, to serve that person, to serve one another, to minister to one another. See it says to the saints to the saints it, it didn't say to the world but yet if you follow along you're gonna see we gotta show them that love too Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 
And it's like Father wants to remind us, so we're getting a reminder, and he said, now go do what y'all just read about. Okay, this is what I put in my note. This is what it means to minister to the Lord. Have y'all ever heard somebody say that? Or it's in the Bible, it says, when you minister to the Lord. They were ministering unto the Lord and fasted. Don, you ever heard that in the Bible where it says they ministered unto the Lord? But if you can't talk, I understand. Yeah, so now y'all know what that means. When you when you minister to the Lord, you are ministering to each other. And I'm going to show you proof scriptures. One of them is Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Put that scripture in the group text. Acts chapter thir 13, verse 2. What do you, what do you want yes, to say, Don? I was off the truck when you were asking me, but uh, yes, I have heard of that. Yeah, but watch this. Watch these next scriptures because he's going to show us proof that I'm, I'm saying the truth in this. Watch this. It says, Quay, can you read that one? Acts chapter 13, verse 2. I see you posted it. <laughs> it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Okay, now, I'm going to show you proof text in the thing Matthew chapter 25 verse 45 Matthew chapter 25 verse 45 now this the NASB version it says it says to extend to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it not unto me. This is Jesus talking. But look what he said. He said, to the extent that you didn't do, do it to one of these, you didn't do it to me. Now I'm going to show you another one. Huh? What was that? Yeah, actually, that's in that chapter. It's just that I picked this out of that because it's just showing the answer. Now, I'm going to give you some more answers to prove this is how we minister to the Lord. And it, when, when we minister to each other, we're now y'all know what it means to minister to the Lord. Now, so in my notes, it says, Truly, if we are truly in Christ we are his body meaning the bride of him the bride of him think about that we're his body like see how mom Don she's my bride she's you know the like the man it says the head right of the household right the body is Don she's the body and G Christ is the head of the man. See, God has order. Really know that. We're his body, the bride of Christ, in the spirit, in the spirit, male and female, locked up or free, bond or free. Okay, in my notes, it says, this is why Jesus asked Saul, who became Paul, 
Why are you persecuting me? And he, Saul, said, Who are you, Lord? Then Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. You see that? That man was persecuting people. Y'all remember that, right? He was persecuting children, women, and men. And look what Jesus said. He said, why are you persecuting me, Paul? But he called him Saul before he changed his name, right? And then, and that's in Acts chapter 9. Post that one, somebody. Y'all don't have to post the whole thing, but if you want to, you can. If you want to, just type Acts 9, chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. Because it's quicker. But if you want to see it later, if you want to do your own study, but forever you will know what ministering to the Lord is now. Wow. So it says, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? I know he was like, ah, because he got, <laughs> he got this light. Yeah. And man, then the Lord Jesus said, this is what he said. I am Jesus. <clears throat> Who you per you're persecuting. But he probably was like, when did I ever persecute you? But he didn't say that. I know he probably thinking, when did I even saw you to persecute you? Y'all, I hope the Lord is giving light to you all. And I want y'all to be praying under your breath. Lord, give me light. I'm blind. I can't see. Uh... Pray for your dad. Pray for me because Paul said pray for us that we will speak as we ought to speak and that revelation will come. You know, if, if when people don't pray for me or a person who's speaking truth, it seems to be hindered. It'd be a, a dwindling, a trinkle. It's no gush. It's no gush of God and truth. It's like the man ain't getting prayed for the, the lady, the young lady. Ain't nobody praying for her. You see, uh, in my notes, I put, examine, look, look, the Lord said examine now fake love, fake, you know, people faking it. Can somebody put in the text, 1 John chapter 4 verse 20. First John chapter four verse twenty and can somebody read it? Does anybody want to read it? Uh, I will. Um, First John chapter four verse twenty reads: If a man says, "I love God," and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, who he has not seen? Isn't that something? Yeah, it says if somebody says, I, you know, I love God. Man, I love God. It was some people said that to, well, Jesus said to some Jews, if Abraham was your father, you would love me, but y'all seeking to stone me and kill me. And he was like, man, you got a demon. Who's trying to kill you? You know? <laughs> Y'all should really read John, but man. So it says, if somebody say, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. And that's why in Revelations, it says, all liars shall have their part in a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. See, this is one liar is the one who say, I love God, but yet I hate this man right over here. I hate you. This is really an evil hate, not like a 
you know, the other hate we were studying to love less, you know? It says he hate his brother or sister. He's a liar, see? And then an, another scripture says, who's a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He's a liar, see? That's another liar. They're going to go into the lake of fire. All antichrist. Does anybody have any questions or anything? No. What What do you all think about this so far? God's plan. Very good. Quay, go ahead. I second that, what she said, but I just say it's like an eye opener. It's like sometimes people need to get reminded. I feel like the fact that you brought this up, like this whole lesson, and even the fact that, you know, cheese version of the day was the lesson. I think it was really meant for us to hear this because, you know, throughout life, people's hearts do get hardened, but. I'll admit mine has to, it was anyway, but I've been also feeling it, I've been feeling like pushed to love more, like even yesterday, like, like Don said, like I, I wasn't that person, like I was a really quiet guy, not really a people person at all, but it's like, like it's coming out of me and like I'm evolving, so I know I that's how you know you're a child of God because I heard this one quote if you're following Jesus and you're not changing then you're not really following Jesus so I feel the change I see the change and apparently other people do too which is great amen amen Don you have anything to say but if you can't talk I understand. Can somebody post Matthew? I can, I can, I can talk. I, I just had to turn my mic on. I pushed the little thing, so sorry about that. Okay. But yeah, <coughs> I would say praise God. I would say praise God for the testimony. And praise God that we have eyes to see each other's growth. Um, love is, Father is the source of love. He didn't create love. So in all the scriptures that we'll be going over today, I'm going to share a few at the end that the Lord had given me about love. But love is the great commandment. It's a commandment that God says that if you don't have it, you can't even come to heaven without it. Okay. But when you go see the movie, and I do really recommend that you guys go see it. It's really just people giving me testimony of what happened to them, how they died, and God sent them back to earth. And one of the things that I would like to recognize about the actual testimonies was that the people who came back did not want to come back. They said, once you felt that kind of love, you don't never want to come back to earth. So I love that, that once you get there, you're not like, oh, oh, oh wish you was on earth. You, you don't have that feeling. It's just so grand there. The love that you feel is beyond anything you've ever felt on earth. But God is trying to create in us that kind of love right here on earth. And we're being tested and tried through people doing stuff to us to, to cause you to hate. And this is why we have to meditate on the word so that we can still continue to walk in love. Let me 
means we got to pick up the Bible and read it and study it. And I also thought about when uh, Chris was talking, expounding on the word. When we study, we just don't look at the word because what we what we actually read in the old English is not what it was translated from the old English back then. So when the Bible was being translated by whatever translator in that time frame, and this this was old English for KJV version, that was old English. So when they was looking at the Hebrew and then bringing it to the English text, those definitions, we don't talk old English anymore. And the words have over time changed, especially here in American version of what a word means versus what it means in Great Britain. The words can mean several things. And, and so you have to know, because uh, when you read a definition, it's, it'll have like five different definitions, and it depends on how you're using that in the sentence that it would fit to what you're saying. So this is why the Word of God says, to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of God. And how do you rightly divide? With the Holy Spirit. Nobody can study the whole, the, the Bible and have any type of understanding of Scripture without the Holy Spirit. So, we're, we're studying out this thing, love. And love is, is a, if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to, to produce any fruits of the Spirit. I know Chris is going to get to it pretty soon. But over in Galatians 5, I think it's around verse 22, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And the first one is love. Everything else is hinged on love. So it'll say love, peace, joy, goodness, kindness. You know what I'm saying? It'll say all these other words behind love. If you don't have love, you can't produce none of the rest of them. Okay, and I'm done. Let's go ahead. Can somebody post Matthew chapter 24? Verses 12 and 13. And can somebody read it? Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 and 13. Because the Lord says, uh, Don't let y'all love grow cold. Don't let it grow cold. Any volunteers? I'll read it. it says in Matthew 24, 12 to 13. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Can somebody read it from another version? I'll read it from the amplifier. I'm just going to turn to it. It says, Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Wow. What do y'all see in that? From what all them scriptures we just showed, what do y'all see in that one? Hardened hearts. Not letting your heart get hardened. And also the, the, the main thing, they didn't abide in God. See? Because he is love. Do y'all see that? Right. Right. Anybody see anything else in that scripture? Wait, what does it mean? 
when your heart gets hardened? What is, can you give me a definition of what you think that means? Heart is hardened. Um, like the scripture said, like your love has grown cold. You become selfish. Um, you love less. You envy. Uh, you just, it's just the opposite of love. Like you're, the love in you just grew cold. Like it's not there anymore. And remember, it's and then you God take it out on other people. Remember, it's no more God in you. Remember, it said you you abide in God, and God abides in you. Think about it. Do we want Him to leave out of us? No, that's scary. The reason I asked that question, and I really present it to everyone, is because I think when we hear a word, do we really know what that heart means? It really means to be godless. It really means to be careless of heart. I don't care about people in any situation. Everybody got a situation. You know, you become so hardened to the fact that you don't care about nothing. Just what, what concerns you and everybody else, too bad and so sad. I'm done. Can somebody type Romans chapter 13, verses 10? Thank y'all for your help, because a lot of reading <laughs> is something. Who wants to read? You're just listening to Romans last night. Is it the one? Is it the one where they're talking about nothing can separate us from the love of God? Can you turn to it? Uh, can somebody Romans thirteen and ten? I'm, yeah, I'm turning to it. It says love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. Wow! See, that's the new royal law. Put that in your notes. We gotta keep the. And the royal. title of the chapter is "Love Fulfills God's Requirements," which is the royal law. Mm -hmm. See, we're not under the the law of Moses no more, but that law, we that's the royal law. We gotta, we gotta do that one. Now, can somebody post? First Corinthians, this is going to sum it up. This this will be the last one unless the Lord say different. So, First Corinthians chapter 13. One through... One through eight. And I think the amplifier will be good for this one. Because this one defines, you know how people, like if we ask Google, what what is love? Like, let me see if I can make it talk, make Google talk real quick. Hold on. Google, what is love? According to Wikipedia, love encompasses a range of strong and positive emotional and mental states, from the most sublime virtue or good habit, the deepest interpersonal affection, to the simplest pleasure. Okay, so you heard that definition. Now let's listen to God's definition. Any volunteers, if not, I'm going to have to read it. I can. Uh, is that the Amplified, Quay? Yeah. Take your time, buddy. Take your time with this one. 
So you said First Corinthians 13, 1 through 8. Yes, yes. Okay. That reads... Hold on. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction. And if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but do not have love, Reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it does me no good at all. Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful, and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things regardless of what comes, believes all things looking for the best in each one, hopes in all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades or ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. Let, let, let me pray right now. You all, please agree with me. And if the Lord touched your heart to add to the prayer, please do. Let's go before the throne of our Father. Bless Heavenly Father, Holy Father. Your name is holy. You are holy. And you said, y'all be holy as my children. Be holy. Set apart, O Father. We come saying thank you again. We love you. We don't want to be hypocrites. Destroy that spirit out of all of us. Destroy hypocrisy. We rebuke. We renounce the spirit of being an actor and a pretender and a hypocrite spirit. We renounce it, Father. And we say thank you, Father, for your truth, your spirit of truth and true love. Father, you said whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We bind that spirit of hypocrisy, play acting and pretending. And we loose your Holy Spirit into ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit, and take over, Holy Spirit. You are love. You are love. Your Holy Spirit of righteousness, Father, we receive righteousness peace and joy authority love 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 and a sound mind most people are going to be losing it father but that's the choice they made but i pray father that you don't cast us from your presence don't cast us into the abyss father don't cast us into the lake of fire and don't take your Holy Spirit away. Father, make us sincere. Make us sincere people. You know fakers. You know pretenders. And we don't want to be that. So we rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. We rebuke it and we cast it into the abyss. Father, remove any any devils, any darkness from us, any 
cords of Satan, any tentacles that's trying to penetrate inside of us, remove it now by your mighty finger and by your mighty word of authority. And I say thank you, along with everybody else saying thank you for that. Thank you, Father, for the change that will come over us. You're going to do it. You say it's not by your might, power, ability, but it's by my spirit. Thank you, Father. We're going to get out of this nasty world. We're going to abide in you. You are love. You are love. And we will love. We pray for an honest and a pure heart. An honest heart. Being honest people. We have renounced that heart, Father, that's trying to manipulate the system. And being lying. Lying to people. And not... And, and, and just telling part of the truth and just that manipulative spirit. We renounce that stiff neck spirit. We renounce it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I apply your blood to myself. And for those that's listening to me, to my children, my wife, and my siblings and family, I plead your blood for them, Father. Give them dreams and visions. Pull us out of the darkness, Lord, that's trying to hold them like thick tar and chains in, in a ball uh, in a prison. Let the chains be broken by your mighty Holy Spirit. For you said when the enemies come in like a mighty flood, you will lift up a standard against them. Be broken, you evil spirits, off of God's people, off of my children. Be broken off Laditria. Be broken off of Lana. Be broken off of Tiffany. Be broken off of Rain. Be broken off of um, Minx. Minx. These are my children, Father. Be broken off of Deshaun. Be broken off of Quashon. Be broken off of Kijane. Be broken off of Ivana. In the name yes. of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. These are my children. Oh, I love you, Father. And yes, Father says, Amen. Son, Amen. And Lord Jesus said, Amen. And the yes. Holy Ghost said, Amen. Amen. Amen, y'all. Amen. Amen. Anybody Amen. want to add Amen. to the prayer? Glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Ah, I felt that one. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Facebook, my name is Brother Chris. I love mm -hmm. y'all. This is the book we're studying out of. Let me turn this around. Whoops. <laughs> One second. Thank you, Thank y'all for being patient with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Understanding God. A guide to developing a personal relationship with God. You all are welcome to our video book study. My name is Brother Chris, and my wife is Sister Don. We love you. Have a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, and a blessed year. The Lord bless you and yours and your families. Peace be unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Shalom. Peace be unto you.